Hi, Cam, Eureka, a.k.a. David, a.k.a. What's up? I want to go right back to the beginning of your whole experience with drag and everything. When did you first decide that drag was something that you wanted to do? Um, I mean, I, I started going to the club kind of illegally. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I started going to Fake ID at like 16 uh, to the local gay bar with like one of my friends. So as soon as I saw drag, I was really intrigued by it. Um, so I started like really being helpful with like a local queen there named Serena Knox. And so I was like driving her to gigs and like helping people get ready backstage and stuff. Um, but when I turned 18, I started doing drag because I wanted to go to the club, but I had only went to the club with this fake ID. So I was like, well, maybe if I go and drag, no one will know it's me and I can use my real ID. It didn't work that well, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I went out and drag and then it just kind of like, I guess I just felt good doing it. And then I decided to start performing. And so I kind of started as soon as I hit the scene in a weird way, like being involved in drag, it just like was naturally something I enjoyed. I also grew up with three women and like always really loved like the female aspects of living, like the fashion and the makeup and the hair and like was always really jealous. I didn't get to like really be a part of it because I was the boy, you know, boys should be doing boy things, um, especially like in East Tennessee where roles are very strictly like male and female when you're being raised um, in that kind of climate and environment, it makes you like, you know, really yearn to like explore that feminine side. So um, when I got a chance to with drag, I just kind of kept going and going and going and here we are. <laughs> You've made such a career out of it. You've done so many incredible things with it and the new show, which I'm going to talk to you in a second, we're here, I'm absolutely loving. But how do you come up with a drag name? For you, Eureka, obviously, it's such a, a creative, inventive name, but where did it come from? Well, my mom is actually Ulrika from Germany. So it's U-L-R-I-K-E. So her name is Ulrika. So I was named after my dad. And to honor my mom, I just wanted to be named after her, I guess, my female persona. Um, but I just spelt it like the vacuum cleaner because it was easier for Americans to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, Growing up, everyone would be like, it's all right there. So I knew I couldn't spell it like my mom did. <laughs> or people would be like, welcome to the stage, all right, O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, no, 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 this is so bad. Oh, it's Eureka. And for somebody who might be watching right now who kind of wants to get into drag themselves, but they don't really know how or what to do, what would you say is the best advice for getting into it for someone watching? Um, I mean, my best advice is like, honestly, if when you want to do something, nothing can stop you. So if you're like halted or paused it's because you want to be right i mean no one can really stand in our way when it comes to anything that we want as human beings so if you want to do it just start watching it um watch people get ready practice makeup like go out and party and drag see how you feel if you like the performance aspect find a newcomer night or um an amateur night if they have one somewhere and just give it a shot or start performing with other queens or you know i don't know there's there's a way trust me if you want to do drag you'll figure it out <laughs> you can get involved i'm absolutely loving the show we're here it's available to watch in new zealand here on neon which is incredible i've been watching awesome. a bunch of the episodes can you tell me for somebody who is watching now who hasn't seen the show themselves can you tell me a bit about the premise of the show and what, what it entails? Um, yeah, I mean, well, the show is really about three drag queens who were originally born in small towns, but we've all moved and made it in somewhat of a bigger city climate, like LA or New York. And now we're going back to these small towns, um, entering into these queer cultures, especially, finding allies or queer people that have stories to tell, and we're amplifying their voices by filming a process of their story, also them going out in their town and inviting them to a, a, um, a big finale show that we do there locally. Um, we source dancers and products and, and obviously audience members to kind of show the support that they have in their town, but also amplify the stories that a lot of people don't get to see or hear because they are a smaller town. Um, and it's, it's things that are very important and like, you know, really um, educational for families and, and for people trying to be allies and or queer people just to feel like they can relate to somebody. Um, so we're amplifying those stories that normally get looked over because they're from a small town. I love the whole message of positivity that is throughout the show as well. Like you are going to these small towns where maybe like LGBTQ people aren't like 
that well seen or that well represented yeah. in the community and the fact that you're starting these conversations and everything i think is just the most amazing thing yeah it's a lot of fun honestly and it's we get kind of surprised every time because um no matter what like i think the the show being named we're here is so important to what we're doing because every episode you're so surprised by how much queer culture actually is there and it just goes to show like we're everywhere we're your teachers we're your lawyers we're your friends we're your cousins like we're here no matter where you're at in the world there are queer people there so um it's a way to like amplify and celebrate it even in an area where it's not being celebrated so I get what you're saying. I appreciate what you're saying. And I love the cars that you guys travel around in. Is that something you oh kind God. of like got to design yourself? How does that work? You know, no, we didn't design them ourselves. They were a surprise for us, actually. We, um, the first day of shooting, um, the creators had teamed up with Marla Weinhoff, whom is head of our art department. She's worked with like Lauren Hill and Lady Gaga. She's done a lot of incredible set design type things in her career. So they hired her on... And the first day of shooting in Gettysburg, um, they grabbed me, Bob, and Shangela, and they, they, they pull up to this field, because the first episode, our safe space was built in this field, like a, like a carnival-type area at the park where they normally do, like, festivals or different events. They had, like, rented the space out and set us up there. And uh, me, Bob, and Shangela are just walking up, and we see these vehicles, and we were just so, it was a huge surprise. I started crying when I saw mine, you know, because so I good. felt so, like, seen. And Bob, like, obviously, he doesn't cry if he doesn't have to. But he was definitely <laughs> very excited about the purse. And Shangela, like, the big pink sparkly one was very her with giant lips on it. And, you know, the big bow to kind of emulate the whole uh, big pink furry box that she jumped out of on Drag Race. So it was just, like, the detail of, like, this art department finding us as characters from this show, but also as artists, like, what represents us. And, of course, it's, like, Bob's purse first, Eureka's the elephant queen, and Shangela's hallelujah, she'll pop out of a box any moment, you know? <laughs> so it was cute. It was a surprise. In terms of the show itself, for you, what is the most rewarding part of being a part of this show? Because I feel like there must be so many rewarding aspects. You know, the rewarding aspects is mostly um, getting to just discover things, even about myself, honestly, talking to these people, and it's almost a reminder sometimes too. I think me, Bob and Shangela have all kind of related to what I'm about to say in a sense where, you know, we've gotten to somewhat of escape from that time in our life where we maybe didn't feel as seen or as a part of um, a bigger picture because we get a little accustomed to living in a bigger city where queer culture is very, you know, it's everywhere. I can walk down the street and wear whatever I want and I'm either, I'm going to be celebrated or not looked at it at all. You know what I'm saying? Like no one's going to bother me though. And, you know, so it's a reminder sometimes when we're in these small towns and we get the backlash of some of the people like not wanting us to be in their areas or, you know, saying they're going to call the law on us or just seeing the, the intimate vulnerability that people open up about not feeling like they belong or being seen. It reminds us sometimes like where we come from, you know, it's very humbling. Um, so that's probably one of my favorite parts, as well as just getting the messages, people watching the show. Um, a lot of people are really relating with it, especially during this time, because the pandemic, a lot of people feel alone. And with this show, it's so inclusive and it touches base on, on um, conversations and people that sometimes people message me and they say, is this real? Did you, all, did you all make them cry like this? Did you all create this scenario? And the truth is, is it's a real life series. Even we um, are amazed at the moments that we get to you know, be a part of doing the show, because it's real, it's real life. There's nothing staged, nothing pushed out, except the show at the end, you know, obviously. We <laughs> build that stage. But these stories are real. It's people's real life. And that's why it's relatable for people. For somebody who might be watching right now who is struggling with their identity, whatever that identity might be, um, it's something that every LGBTQ plus person does struggle with. Do you have any advice to help, I guess, navigate those moments of confusion? I think it's just learning to like, learning to cope with it yourself. I think that we as people have the power to react the way we want to, to any situation. Um, and it's hard and it's painful and it can be very lonely. But um, the biggest lesson that I learned in life is like, as soon as you stop worrying about what everyone else thinks and you start living your authentic self, although it might be painful at first, 
it won't take very much time that other people that are like you and that love you and that celebrate you and that support you will be attracted to you and celebrate you in ways that you could never imagine because it's so hard to be authentic. It's so hard to be yourself and people want to be a part of that. So you'll find your tribe if you're being yourself. If you feel like you're alone and no one understands who you are, then it might be because you're not showing the world who you really are. And people are not attracted to unauthenticity. So as soon as you find out who you are authentically and start celebrating it, other people will celebrate it with you. It's just how the world works. 100%, such wise words. Thank you so <laughs> much for your time. And to anybody who's watching right now, you can go and check out We're Here. Season one is available to watch right now on Neon. Eureka, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. You're amazing. I'm so Come glad visit I got us in New Zealand sometime soon. Oh, I can't wait, please.